Howdy, it's Kyle talking about the tallest man-made structures in North America that are not skyscrapers. So I'll be looking at towers, arches, needles, and monuments in a countdown to see which ones are the tallest. And I'll also be looking at some of the ones that are just really interesting or cool looking, even though they might not be amongst the tallest. So let's take a look at the tallest non-skyscraper man-made things in North America. I'm going to start off by counting down the tallest habitable freestanding structures. I would normally do a top 10, but there's a nice natural break after 11, so I'll do the top 11. And as such, at number 11 is the other Space Needle in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It stands at 407 feet and was completed in 1969. Gatlinburg is at the entrance to Great Smoky Mountains National Park, and the top of the tower offers fantastic views of the mountains. Starting the actual top 10 is the other Eiffel Tower, the one in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. It's a half-scale replica of the real Eiffel Tower in Paris, and at 541 feet is a nice addition to the already crazy Las Vegas skyline. Next is the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. It, of course, honors George Washington, the first president of the U.S. It stands at 555 feet and is the world's tallest obelisk. There are no skyscrapers in the District of Columbia itself, so the Washington Monument is very prominent. Next is the Reunion Tower in Dallas, Texas. This was built in 1978, part of an urban renewal project for the city. Despite the dubious nature of its origin, it is a really cool looking tower, especially at night when it lights up. Also in Texas, slightly taller than the Reunion Tower is the San Jacinto or San Jacinto Monument outside of Houston. It stands at 567 feet and is a monument to the Texas Revolution and the Battle of San Jacinto. And because it's in an otherwise open area that's pretty flat, it's also very prominent. At number 6 is the more well-known Space Needle, the one in Seattle. This was built in 1962 for the World's Fair and stands at 605 feet. It's not right in the heart of the downtown cluster of high-rises in Seattle, so it often stands out off to the side. And the observation deck from it gives you nice views of the ever-changing Seattle skyline. Starting off the top 5 is the Calgary Tower in Calgary, Alberta. This was completed in 1968 to celebrate the centennial of Canada in 1967. It stands at 191 meters, and at the time that it was built, it was all by its lonesome as a tall building. However, in the recent decades, there's been a lot of new skyscrapers built downtown, and the skyline kind of surrounds the tower now. At number four is the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri. This was built to commemorate the expansion of the United States to the west, this is the world's tallest arch and is the most prominent feature of the St. Louis skyline. It really stands out there by itself. Next up is the third of the big three Texas towers, the Tower of the Americas in San Antonio. This stands at 750 feet and was built for the 1968 World's Fair. It's interesting how many of these on this list were built in the 60s and 70s. I'm not sure if there's much desire for new arches and towers being built these days. However, I must say the Tower of the Americas, despite being the tallest of the three big Texas towers, I think is also the ugliest. At number two on this list is the Stratosphere Tower, also in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. There's quite a bit of gap between the Tower of the Americas and the Stratosphere Tower, as this one stands at 1,149 feet. And at the top of this thing, there's an observation deck and a handful of thrill rides. So just one more crazy building in Las Vegas to make the skyline look even crazier. And by far, the tallest habitable freestanding structure in North America that is not a skyscraper is the CN Tower in Toronto. This thing stands at 553 meters and was the tallest building in the entire world until 2007 with the completion of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. And despite the huge number of skyscrapers all throughout the Toronto skyline and many more being built, the CN Tower still towers over all of them. So those are the absolute tallest habitable freestanding structures in North America, but I want to go over some of them that's really cool and interesting looking, even though they aren't super tall. The first is the Sun Sphere in Knoxville, Tennessee. This stands at 266 feet and was also built for a World's Fair, this one in 1982. I've always liked how the Sun Sphere looks in downtown Knoxville. I think it's a really cool looking building. Also quite tall is the Pilgrim Monument in Provincetown, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. It's a monument to the Pilgrim's arrival in North America. It stands at 253 feet and is the world's tallest man-made granite structure. Another monument in Massachusetts is the Bunker Hill Monument in Boston. This commemorates the Battle of Bunker Hill in the Revolutionary War and stands at 221 feet. 
It's not downtown, so it's very noticeable in a neighborhood with no high-rises. Another really cool-looking tower is the Prayer Tower on the campus of Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This thing is 200 feet tall, looks really cool, and overall the campus of Oral Roberts University is a gold mine of strange architecture. This is just one of many weird-looking buildings on the campus and a pretty good-sized tower. The next one I want to mention is the Gaffney Peachoid in Gaffney, South Carolina. Now this is simply a water tower. It was built in 1981 in a major peach growing region of the state. It's painted like a peach and stands prominently over Interstate 85. But if you're from South Carolina, you know that most people refer to it as the big butt in the sky. And I'm sure Sir Mix-a-Lot would approve because at 135 feet, this thing is big. But speaking of water towers, the tallest water sphere is the Union Water Sphere in Union, New Jersey. It stands at 212 feet and proudly calls itself the world's tallest water sphere. Or is it? There's another water tower in Edmond, Oklahoma that stands at 218 feet, taller than the one in Union. However, the top is not technically a sphere. Look, it's kind of onion shaped. And believe it or not, there's a back and forth with this over which one is the tallest water sphere. The tallest lighthouse in North America is the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. It's the second tallest lighthouse in the entire world, and at 199 feet, it's probably the most well-known and most highly photographed lighthouse in the U.S. I also want to make special mention of the Statue of Liberty for this video. Now, technically, as a statue, it isn't usually compared to some of these other ones, but because it does have an interior, it is technically a habitable, freestanding structure. But it's also not as tall as you might be thinking. The statue itself is only 151 feet. That's the statue itself, but including the base, it's 305 feet. But even if you count the base for the entire height, the Statue of Liberty is still not tall enough to make the countdown for this video. Okay, now the boring reality check. Most of the tallest man-made structures in North America are either chimney smokestacks or TV towers. In terms of chimneys, the tallest one is the Inco Superstack in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. This is the tallest chimney in North America, the second tallest in the world, and it's used for nickel smelting. This thing is 381 meters and is taller than any of the habitable structures except for the CN Tower. The tallest man-made structure on the continent is the KVLY TV Antenna Tower in Blanchard, North Dakota. This thing stands at 1,987 feet, and at almost 2,000 feet, it's a little bit taller than the CN Tower. However, it is guide with guy lines, so it is not freestanding. But if you look at the list of the tallest man-made structures in North America, they're almost all TV towers. So that's my overview of a lot of the tallest man-made structures in North America that are not skyscrapers. A lot of really interesting structures and a lot of really high observation decks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerdy perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support. If you're interested in purchasing a pin for the viewer pin map or just to support the channel, check out my Patreon page, link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.